Hello. Good evening, everyone. Every parent has a dream, a dream for their child to have a happy and a successful life. Look at the mother to the left. She dreams for her child to go to a good school, have a great education, and do well in life. Look at the mother to the right. What do you think her dreams are? To feed and clothe her child? That's not all. She has dreams too. Dreams for her child to go to a good school, have a great education, and do wonderful in life. She has a desire to be involved in her child's education, but then she lacks the knowledge and the resources to do so. Sadly, this is not a problem of just this mother. There are millions of mothers in the world going through this every day. Early childhood research and UN reports say that there are 750 million illiterate adults globally who cannot take part in their child's development. These children then enter school underprepared, fall behind academically, and then drop out of school. They then grow up to become those illiterate adults who cannot take part in their child's development. This is a vicious cycle of illiteracy. And seven, out of the 750 million you see there, 150 million are women who live just in India, and 250 million children cannot read and write by the time they are in their second grade. Those intervenes right where this problem begins and helps these illiterate adults be a part of their child's development. Those, which means friend in Hindi, is a mobile learning platform which promotes parental engagement in early childhood development. Mothers receive short pre-recorded messages on their mobile phones about activities they can do with their children right at their homes. Those also prompt them to provide feedback about their child progresses through these activities. The key point is the content is based on already proven curriculum which works for in-person in programs. And based on research, we have identified four domains, English and number literacy, or language and number literacy, socio-emotional skills and motor skills, and adapted existing content into a mobile platform using in-house expertise. We have a short demo to show you how this all works. Now you'll hear a call with Jyoti, a mother of a one-year-old, a dose user for the past five months, receives. Uh, for the purposes of the demo, we have translated the content which is originally in Hindi into English. Hello? Hello, Dost. Did you know music stimulates short-term memory, problem-solving, physical coordination, and creative thinking in your child? All kids are born with the potential to understand music and songs. So here is Dost's advice for today. Sing to your child daily while bathing, feeding, or putting them to sleep. You can sing anything from a Bollywood song to a nursery rhyme. Here is an example to get you started. Jyoti receives four such calls from those every week. And like you just heard, the content is simple, easily digestible, and can be readily applied at home. And through her journey with those, Jyoti becomes more confident and feels capable of being a part of her child's development. Our theory of change is that this confident mother also becomes a knowledgeable user of educational content and knows what to do or who to approach when it comes to her child's education. She goes ahead to impact the child who then enters school prepared and grows up to be the adult who has already reset the cycle of illiteracy. Uh, the research on early childhood development proves that this very interaction between the mother and the child has led to better economic and labor outcomes. And impact is something which is very important to us and as you can see, we, can, we have built it right into every step of the process. 
Great. So we were excited to launch those last summer in Bombay, in Paragi, which is a large slum, in coordination with a partnership based in the community. And in less than two weeks, we had 100, over 100 mothers actually, signed up and using the product. It was super exciting to see how these women were intrinsically motivated to be a part of their child's development. We heard feedback like, I always listen to the calls. I love that the activities are so simple and I can just do them right at home. It just feels good. And these same mothers told us things like, we want the content to be adapted to our child's profile. You know, my kid is one, so the content needs to know that, etc. And that's exactly what our platform does now. But we also met moms who felt a little disempowered at first. They said, you know, I'm illiterate, so how can I play a role in my child's education so early? But over time, they, you know, they saw their neighbor's kids and others using those progress. They didn't want to be left behind, and they were influenced by their social network. We want to leverage this dense community uh, dynamic that's occurring. So these motivated moms become those champions. That's what we're calling them. They're those champions who influence the less motivated moms in their community. They also later on become our sales force on the ground. Now, this, uh, during this pilot, we had surveys and data collected throughout, and we heard that the moms who used our product remembered, practiced, and retained the content that they heard and the activities they learned. We also found out that they were currently spending about $3 a month on subpar options that were low in quality, and they were frustrated by the options available to them. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Right now, a mom, like the ones we worked with, has the option to work to send her kid to a traditional daycare. There, there's 100 kids and one teacher. The quality is very inconsistent, and it completely doesn't engage the mom. On the other hand of the side, she has mobile voice call platforms available to her. But those are limited in their content and are strictly focused on things like maternal health. Once her child is about four months old, she's left on her own. And the truth is she wants more, and she, we, we want to capture that potential and that motivation. So aside from our content being locally relevant, fun, and engaging, and the fact that it's so simple that she just uses the technology already in her hands, it's in our scalable cost structure that we think we can have deep impact. We deliver impact at scale at $10 a year per user, and this is enabled through our subscription-based model. So in the red line on the graph, you can see that our costs start to plateau as we grow our user base. Once we hit about 25,000 users, somewhere between year two and three, uh, we break even. And this assumes a 40% dropout rate. So based on feedback yesterday, we realized we should be conservative in our approach here. So even if 40% of the women drop out, we are able to maintain that. So we've currently priced the product at $2 per month per user. That's based on uh, what uh, being cheaper than the subpar options they're paying for already today. And it's also in line with the surveys they reported to be willing to pay up to a dollar, on average, a dollar fifty a month. If we reduce our cost to one dollar per month, we still reach a break-even point between years two and three. We'll acquire our customers at first through channel partners, like nonprofits or mission aligned. But then over the next couple of years, those early moms will become those champions and the sales force on the ground that we talked about earlier. Now, working on illiteracy in India with adults in early childhood is not an easy task. But we are the team that has the optimism, the grit, and the passion to get this work done. I'm Sneha. I'm a second year MBA student at Berkeley. And before Haas, I was in working in international development, education and strategy consulting, both in India and the US. Sindhuja is a computer scientist, also a graduate student at UC Berkeley, and she worked with large companies like Adobe on building their edtech platforms before graduate school. Devanshi is also a UC Berkeley PhD candidate in the School of Education. And Devanshi already has uh, experience in building curriculum to engage parents in early childhood, uh, it, during early childhood also both in India and the US. We are actually currently, last week, we signed up a new partnership with a company called Indus Action. And through Indus Action, 1,000 new moms will start using those in May. Now, these 1,000 moms are ready. And in the meantime, Sindhuja Devanshi and I are expanding our curriculum. 
we're refining the technical platform to accommodate scale, and we're fundraising. We need your support to help us get there and break the cycle of illiteracy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for a wonderful presentation and that call, which I thought was really uh, entertaining and uh, shows uh, both the simplicity and um, effectiveness of, of, of your product. Um, does somebody want to kick us off with a question? Sure. Uh, I, I have several questions. Um, um, I, and I may have missed it. Do you have outcome measurement as part of this process? Do you know that it's working? Yeah. Um, so we have measurements in terms of uh, the activities the mothers retained after the pilot, and it was self-reported about the anger, like what they did with their children before and after. Yeah. So uh, sorry, yeah, to yeah. add to it, to, in the longer run, uh, we do have, um, all, we have already got the early childhood development checklist and milestones children are supposed to reach, and this impact measurement will be built into the process. As to and compare it to kids for progress. Yeah. In, in that case, my follow-up question is: Can't you get other people to pay for it other than the mothers in these communities? There is no shortage of funding in this area. Yeah, so that's a really good question, and we have actually spoken to nonprofits who are willing to pay for it up front, which is maybe a better way to start. Um, I think the challenge there is both of us have experience in India, and these types of communities are inundated with stuff for free and they don't use it and they're not engaged in it. And so I think at the core of our team's belief is that they should demand this product, they should want it, and they should believe in it. And even if they can only pay the nominal fee, which is you know the lowest that I mentioned is a dollar a month, um, that's about you know one to five percent of their monthly salary and we think that they can we think if they believe in the product they'll pay for it. So it could be that it's subsidized. So another idea we have to boost our revenue is um, there's a new law in India around CSR. So every company of a certain size has to donate 2% of their profits to CSR efforts. And everyone's kind of scrambling because they don't know what to do with that um, and make impact. So we can imagine like a Unilever saying this today's message was sponsored by Unilever you know, and, and giving an extra dollar to us. So, so there's opportunities for others to pay, but we really think having the mothers paying a little bit on their own is really key to our engagement. I, I would agree. Um, you know, as Freud said, if, if, if you don't pay, the therapy doesn't work. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Steve. Yeah, um, so uh, you sound like you're focusing right now on the ECE stage, early childhood uh, education. Yes. Do you envision that this will be able to move up into primary school education, or do you, uh, you believe that it, it's limited to only uh, childhood education? And I, I'll reserve the right for a follow-up question on that one. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. so uh, right now these mothers and the communities we are talking about have, like we pointed out earlier, have a lot of maternal health-related uh, voice health services. And as you all are aware, UN had the MDGs, Millennium Development Goals, and SDGs, because of which there are so many organizations focusing on enrollment and quality of education as and when the kids enter school and progress further. So there's this huge gap left behind in between like the four months to five year period, and that's where we are filling, filling the gap. And the way we envision the mothers graduating from those is like uh, we hand them out these over to these organizations and who would take them up. And if you want to add. Yeah, I just wanted to add that also, I think the vision to take the platform beyond ECE is more around other things that the same mom who has a young child would need. So you could imagine, we talked about this earlier this morning, um, in India there's the other identification card. So, you know, we start telling them, remember by the time your child is just five, sign up for this identification card so that you can unlock all these policy-based you know, subsidies or so on that you could get. So the platform has potential beyond early childhood education. I think um, it also has potential to move to a smartphone-based application very soon. Um, the audience that, or the population we're targeting right now would not be reached if we use smartphone apps, but in the next five years that will change. And so I think at that point, we can do a lot more rich media, more interaction, maybe understanding our users even better, and uh, expanding from there. And you have a follow-up question? 
Well, yeah, I was just saying, I mean, it's more, yeah, you, there's such an opportunity to take this beyond that. But connecting a parent with their child in the learning experience is so powerful. So uh, if that could continue on, there's a lot of potential and you never want to give away your clients. So if you could stay with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. I have an observation and a question about the user experience. Uh, you guys must know Baby Center, which is yes. sort of your biggest competition here in the States. Similar, Matt Glickman, who is a friend of mine, we used to work together, and when he left, he built this. It was originally an email product that you would just get an email out, which you do. It's similar, very similar to your delivery model. Yeah. And what he found was they had, ge they had ge uh, ex not quite exponential graph, but geometric growth. What they found was when the, when the web became uh, so easy to use that we actually created sub-communities and tribes in today's language, that that's when the exponential growth took off. I'm curious, how do you create tribes in two-way learning, a many-to-many -many learning model in such a simple delivery? Yeah, I think part of the, those champions is to address exactly that. So right now, because it is through this a simple feature phone uh, platform, we envision that these, there's a powerful network dynamic happening and so these become learning communities that you know maybe after their child is five and they're graduated to you know their child is now in primary school these moms are still connecting with each other and we can facilitate that through you know additional parent engagement workshops that are in person obviously not the core of our model and definitely not happening frequently but we would love to support that in-person engagement process um, and then of course once these communities are on smartphones that I mean the potential is huge um, and it's really interesting, I think working in these communities, the buzz that gets created so quickly because they're so, you know, knitted together, I mean, it, they don't need internet to do that. And so um, I think it's happening already and the potential for that to go further. And Baby Center was actually one of the, the core, you know, platforms we started looking at for, for uh, content and expertise. So, yeah. By the way, if, if you want to meet Matt, he's a... He's a huge fan of India, and so he lives down the street in the Bay Area. Happy to make the introduction. It's <laughs> helpful. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think you showed us a, a slide, but you just flashed it for about half a second about how the, 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 the space that you occupy and how you differentiate it you know, from others. Um, and I, I, I'm struggling to sort of understand how you can sustain a, a competitive differentiation in, in your model. It, it seems to me it doesn't take much for people to catch on very quickly. Wow, these these girls are so successful. Well, but we can do the same. Uh, so I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, I mean, that's a good, great point. I think we have a first mover advantage for sure. So we're one of the first people addressing this early childhood space, but that's not enough. Um, we also really believe our team has this it is really our core thing to take this content that is out there in the world, quality control it, adapt it, simplify it, make it culturally relevant, expand it to new communities, make it culturally relevant there. I don't think it, I mean, that's not an easy process to replicate, but I also think that our partnerships is what makes this really strong. So, you know, as we start out, we're already working with organizations like Teach for India, which is, you know, expanding very quickly. Um, we also have partnerships with people like Room to Read, which is based in the Bay Area, um, local community organizations. I think that having that, the, the, we're really interestingly positioned in that we have the U.S. Bay Area network as well as the Deep India network. And through Dalberg, I have the Kenya and the you know Ghana and other networks as well. So I think I think our team is is first. We're probably the best to do this work. Um, and we also have the expertise curriculum partnerships that we need to get, you know, to be the best. And as uh, Steve pointed out, I think there's potential to improve the platform beyond just what we're doing and to, you know, we talked a lot today, this point we were talking about, maybe we could sell the data and the insights that we get on, like, how are students doing um, and what are their biggest needs to schools. You know, schools are now using blended learning platforms in India and they have a million options and they don't know what to even buy. So how can we inform their procurement process? Um, how can we maybe help ed tech companies focus their efforts on the, the skills that are most lacking or, or you know, don't focus on this because that's been covered? So I think as we build our expertise, that's where we, we see our, our strength. Is there anything else that you could sell to this audience that's related? I think you've talked about other things that you can 
um, sell to advertisers or data, but but now that you have this captive audience, are there other products that you guys would or services that you guys would offer? To uh, as our core is on promoting the parental engagement with the child, so we do not, uh, we definitely do not want to dive into selling commodity-based items. So uh, we are, uh, we will stick with education and how to maintain this ongoing parental involvement as the child progresses. And yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you.